We open our minds and our hearts as we celebrate our Eucharist in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we begin our day, and as we begin our week, my dear sisters and brothers, we become aware of the many things we bring before the Lord, the many things, the many people we hold in our hearts. We ask the Lord to bless them. We ask the Lord to bless all of these things in our hearts. All four candles of our Advent wreath are now lit. We ask the Lord to illumine, to light up the many dark parts, corners of our hearts with His light, especially parts of ourselves that continue to need faith, courage, and commitment. Let us now humble ourselves and recognize our many sins and ask for the Lord's pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Forgive us for the times when our lives fail to be light to others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when we insist on our own way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mercy and compassion. Forgive us for the times when our words and our ways lack mercy and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation and always celebrate it with due reverence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zora of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have had no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son you will conceive and bear, no razor shall touch his head. For this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, You will be with child and will bear a son. 
So take neither wine nor strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord stirred him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell of your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Alleluia, alleluia, O Ruth of Jesus', Jesus stem, sign of God's love for all his people, come to save us without delay. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as priest in his divisions, turned before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall name him John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers towards children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel who stands before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news, but now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which shall be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were awaiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this, his wife conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
in the first reading from the book of Judges, Manoah's barren wife is told by an angel that she will conceive and bear a son. This ordinary woman takes to heart the words of the angel. She does not even ask where the angel comes from, nor does she question the angel's instructions. But on the other hand, in today's Gospel from Luke, when an angel appears to Zechariah and tells him that his barren wife Elizabeth will conceive and bear a son, the man is unconvinced. He does not believe the angel. He asks, how shall I know this? And how ironic, isn't it? The simple woman believes, while the man, a priest at that, does not believe. The, the housewife is strong in her faith. The priest struggles in his. And how ironic that Zechariah's unbelief unfolds right at the altar of God as he carries out his priestly duties. The priest, presider at worship, leader of the community in prayer, man of God, falters in his faith. Because of his unbelief, Zechariah is made mute, unable to utter sacred blessings, unable to carry out his priestly work. But notice how our stories today weave both faith and unbelief, believing and doubting, worthiness and unworthiness, full acceptance and second thoughts, receiving and rejecting, themes that are very familiar because they are also themes in our own stories, our own journeys of faith. Our readings these days, my sisters and brothers, have been preparing us for the coming of the Son sent to save all of us. We are reminded that the name of the Savior is Emmanuel, God with us, who is to call and rule and redeem all nations, and I mean all, men and women, rich and poor in spirit and in faith, believers and unbelievers alike, all including those doubting and wondering, those afraid and confused, those burdened and uncertain, and that's all of us. So the story of Zechariah is especially comforting for all of us, for us who do not have perfect faith, who many times struggle with our own faith, who at times feel we cannot understand why things are happening in our life, who ask God questions and in all honesty, pour out to him all our doubts and our fears and our complaints. Zechariah, even in his far from perfect faith, is called to serve God in his most sacred sanctuary, chosen to burn incense and lead God's people in prayer and worship, even when he's most unworthy. God entrusts to him the faith of his people, even as he struggles with his own. God in his tender mercy and compassion, sees much good in him, sees great possibilities in us, even in our many limitations. God makes him speechless for a while, perhaps if only to allow Zechariah some inner space, quiet enough to hear God. So Zechariah can sift through the many voices and noises in his heart and finally hear God in his questions, in his inmost struggles, in his silence. Perhaps, my sisters and brothers, the Lord reminds us today through Zechariah's story to face what in our lives lacks or falters in faith, to name and place this before the Lord, to let Him touch and reach and redeem what remains resistant and unbelieving in us. Let us not be afraid. God is a loving Father who listens to the prayers of His children. In due time, He will grant the aspirations of His people who call on Him. For every prayer we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may defend the dignity of human life against the threats of abortion, neglect, violence, and extreme poverty, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our nation and our leaders may see the newborn babies not as burdens to carry, but as gifts of God and bearers of hope for the future of the country, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That parents may welcome children with love and responsibility and help them discover the will of God for them, 
we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the Lord may bless married couples who, like Zechariah and Elizabeth, long for children to love and care for, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That we may reverence the elderly and help them to be productive members of family and society by their prayers, wisdom, and concern for the young, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those celebrating their birthdays, Noel Berinha, Nath Tan, Bea Tan, Jojo Castro, Father Nilo Labra of the Society of Jesus, Father Jojo Magadia of the Society of Jesus, Mike Diliaco, and Josefina Almine, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of Rika Trota, Teddy Patag, Linda Ferrer, and Joel de Peralta, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Maripi Alvarez and Tong Diliaco, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Malu Daria Villanueva, Riena Tan, Nilson and Joy Navarrete, Juni and Nini Veloso, Bombi and Jinky Dominguez, Doy and Mimi Concha, Jun and Aget Banta, Pio and Marge Batino, Jacobo Santos, Enan and Daisy Abellaneda on their wedding anniversary, Jesuit Vocation Workshop, CIS Tagbilaran Clergy Training, John Paul and Eloisa Sepe, Ryan and Michelle Tan. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, dispose our hearts to welcome our Savior this Christmas and for our encounter with Him in our daily lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon your altars, that what we bring, despite our weakness, may be sanctified by your power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Amen. Lord be with you. And, and with your Lord. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is solely right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed this first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise to which now we dare to hope. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of Your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Onesto our Bishop and all who serve your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Ignatius of Loyola, Francis Xavier, Peter Faber, and all your holy men and women who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We pray for peace, peace in the world, in our country, in our families, our communities, and peace in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Just a brief announcement. For the third consecutive year, our Advent, Radio Katipunan, together with our nine-day Novena Masses, is staging our Pamaskong Handog. We have ident identified nine poor community beneficiaries, and each would receive Christmas Noche Buena packs worth 400 peso each. If you can find it in your heart to reach out to these communities, we will be happy to receive your donations through our Facebook pages at Radio Katipunan and Jesuit Communications. Thank you and Merry Christmas to all of you. Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come that they may welcome the nativity of our Savior and honor it with minds made pure through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.